So when we talk about endoparasites, we are talking about endo inside. So these are actually parasites that live inside their hosts. And so this is versus being an ectoparasite. And you can imagine that endoparasites and ectoparasites would have different adaptations to their lifestyle. So one of the common things that these endoparasites have is a complex life cycle. And this allows the dispersal um, of individuals from one host to, the no to another. So we have these hosts that where, for example, the adults reside, and in order for them to reproduce and actually pass on their genes to offspring, they need to get that into those, their offspring into another host. And obviously they could reproduce within their host and produce lots of offspring, but oftentimes we get this complicated life cycle that allows for dispersal. And you can imagine how important that is for a continuation of the life of the endoparasite. So if an adult gets into my body and reproduces baby worms, for example, of flatworms, when I die, they die with me. And so that's like the end of them. And so there's gotta be a mechanism by which they get their offspring to another individual. So we have a complex life cycle. Sometimes we have, um, in this life cycle, we have multiple hosts. So we'll put multi multiple hosts are common. So sometimes we call the primary host the one with the adult. And then the secondary host, for example, could have the larval form. So that is one example. Sometimes they have even more than just two. They might have three hosts. Now, not all um, endoparasites have multiple hosts, but it is very common. So let's look at an example of a human tapeworm and its life cycle. So the secondary hosts of human tape tapeworms are typically pigs, beef, that would be cows, and uh, fish. And so this is why, for example, um, when you talk about cooking meat, how important it is to cook the meat in order to kill off any possible larval parasites. Now, like sushi grade fish, for example, where you're eating it raw, they have to go through um, really, they go through a process where they try to eliminate all possibility of having parasites in the meat. But this is why you generally, typically do not eat undercooked food. And this is actually why it's probably a really bad idea to dare somebody to eat an, uh, like a live goldfish or something like that, or to dare somebody to eat a, um, a slug, right? Because you never know, there might be larval parasites in there that you, you don't know about. Anyway, okay. So when we talk about the human tapeworm, the primary host, and I'll put like primary right there, is the human. So it is the human digestive system, so the intestine. So the adult resides in the, di the, um, the digestive system. Now typically, one way to get out your uh, larvae and your eggs is through the feces. So eggs leave the host via feces. So this is another reason why taking care of specifically humans, we have so many humans on the planet, right? If we don't have a hygienic system of dealing with our waste, then you could have these eggs in the soil. So for example, if your sewage goes out into the water, um, perhaps there's eggs, there's uh, parasitic eggs in there, and then they can be eaten by fish. And then the larvae insists in the fish, and then the human eats the undercooked fish meat, and then the life cycle continues again. So uh, 
outhouses, even just burying your uh, waste is a good idea. Okay, so the eggs leave the host. They're eaten by secondary... And this is where the larvae insist in the muscle. Okay, and then when they insist in the muscle, that is actually because this is what we typically eat. So if you want a human to get the larvae, you might not insist in the brain or insist in the, you might insist in the liver, but not someplace where they are going to eat it. Not in the eyes, for example, okay? So this life cycle makes sense from an evolutionary perspective. It's in the skeletal muscle that we typically eat. And then we eat. So the larvae are eaten. And then the life cycle is completed. Okay, so that is just a very common type of life cycle. And it actually is pretty complex, but it's not as complex as some that we will talk about.